Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. They say that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. But, buddy, you ain't never heard of Jean de Clisson. Good Lord Almighty. I know the start of this is going to sound a bit dry. A French noblewoman in the 14th century, I, I get it. But I swear to you, this lady's story will make up for it. She cray. Jean de Clisson was born into an affluent French family in 1300 and spent most of her life as a noblewoman. She was married off to a wealthy man, Geoffrey de Chateaubriand, at the age of 12 and had two children. Some time after his death, Jean remarried this time to Olivier de Clisson in Brittany. I should point out Brittany is an area that is now a part of modern-day France, but at the time, it was its own independent nation, and it would often skirmish with the English and the French. It was quite powerful, and the people who lived there were called Bretons. So, a Breton is someone from Brittany. So new hubby, Olivier de Clisson, was an important Breton noble who spent years in service defending Brittany against the English. By way of background, when the Duke of Brittany died with no male heir in 1341, both King Edward III of England and Philip VI of France saw an opportunity. Brittany lay between their kingdoms, right in the middle, and would provide either a useful foothold or buffer to invasion. This issue, combined with King Edward's claim to French territories and the crown itself, formed the basis for the Hundred Years' War. If, if you've heard of that before, that's, that's what that is. So, although her hubs Olivier had served the French in defending Brittany from the English, the French authorities, in particular a guy named Charles du Blois, who had once fought at Olivier's side, began to doubt Olivier's loyalty, and rumors had spread that Olivier had defected to the English. Ugh. So, King Philip of France the Sixth took Charles de Blois' advice and had Olivier captured and tried with treason. And on August 2nd, 1343, he was executed by beheading. Olivier's head was then sent to Nantes and displayed on a pole outside of the castle of Buffet. The nobility was shocked, both at the lack of presented evidence, of which there was literally nothing, and the treatment of his body, which was reserved mainly for low-class criminals. So Jean... Enraged and bewildered over her husband's execution, swore vengeance against both the king and Charles de Blois. And this, ooh, this is where the story takes a turn. And tell me this would not make for an amazing movie. So the first thing Jean de Clisson did was to sell off all the land she still owned and raise a force of loyal men with whom she attacked pro-French forces in Brittany. When her situation became too dangerous on land, she purchased three warships and took to the seas. She even brought her elementary-age kids with her because, well, education all starts in the home. She had her ships painted black and dyed the sails red to intimidate the enemy, earning the title The Black Fleet. Her flagship was named My Revenge. This lady is awesome. The ships of the Black Fleet patrolled the English Channel for French ships, especially those owned by King Philip and members of the French nobility. Her crews, as merciless under her orders as she was herself, would kill almost everyone in the enemy's crews, leaving only one or two alive to carry news to the king that she had struck again. This earned Jean the epithet of the Lioness of Brittany, reviled as a monster by some, but praised as a heroine by others. In her efforts to keep the English Channel completely free of French ships, she formed an alliance with the English, laundering supplies to their soldiers for battles. And she continued her work as a pirate even after the death of her enemy, King Philip VI, in 1350, because you know what, screw him, that's why. Jean de Clisson fought as a pirate for 13 years. When her quest for revenge ended, it was not through losing a battle, nor was it the French authorities finally catching up with her and taking their revenge on her, which, let's be honest, would have made sense. But she just walked away. She went, eh, I'm done. And that never happens in piracy. In fact, Jean's story comes to a close as she found love with an English noble named Sir Walter Brentley. He had in fact been King Edward III's lieutenant during a campaign against Charles Dublois, so, you know, there's some nice common ground for them to talk about. 
She married Sir Walter in 1356, settled into a quiet life in the castle of Hennebon in France, which was a territory of her allies, and later died there of a, you know, unknown cause. But Jean's story, uh, it didn't end perfectly from her perspective, because she never really managed to take revenge on Charles de Blois for his role in Olivier's death, and he lived until 1364 when he died in battle and he was later canonized as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. Ugh. (laughs) Well, she tried. So perhaps the most successful, vengeance-filled battle axe to ever patrol the high seas was a pissed-off widow named Jean who showed that she didn't need no man. And how this hasn't been made into a Hollywood movie, I cannot even fathom. I know that they say that hope floats, but if you see the blood-red sails of the Black Fleet steaming your way, you're pretty much sunk. (laughs) 